In this edition of Careers That Matter, I'm joined by Crystal Wittervrongel, who is a, the Director of Research at the Montreal Economic Institute. And today we're taking a look at her career, the work that she does today, and her career path. Crystal, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what exactly is your job? Well, I wear a hundred different hats, but I'm called the director of research. So ultimately, I do research on public policy relevant uh, topics to the Canadian economy, specifically Alberta, Quebec, and, and the pan-Canadian lens. Um, and then on the back end of it, I, I help drive the research processes of the organization. So keeping us on track with our various commitments uh, to donors, but also just keeping us on, in line uh, with what we are set to do for the year. So what does a typical day look like for you? Like to go about doing that, what are the kinds of activities that you have to undertake to be able to deliver that kind of research? So the think tank world is a very interesting one in that usually uh, the organization is very small, which mine is as well. Um, so you're often doing multiple different tasks within the same time period, which requires you to be quite nimble um, and able to switch gears rather quickly. So um, that goes into the, the news cycle as well. So, you know, if I'm doing research on a long term project like primary care in Canada, for example, and then, you know, the government of Alberta makes an announcement that there's this grand sweeping change. I'm shifting gears. I'm jumping on that, capitalizing on that with whatever recommendations we may or may not have, if it's applicable, of course. Um, so a typical day is project management, research, comms, uh, media monitoring. It's kind of everything all at once and keeps it very exciting. Uh, by research or when you're reading or, or uh, you know, researching, are you mostly reading uh, material or are you also connecting with experts in uh, particular disciplines to help round out your knowledge base? All of the above. Oh. So we do a lot of background, uh, which is reading and, and keeping abreast of what's going on, both in the academic literature, but then also in the gray literature or, or the policy relevant context. But when it comes to things like uh, healthcare or, or energy, which are my two areas of, of specialization, I often touch base with stakeholders or other experts in the field to just, you know, make sure that what we are, are thinking or the directions we're taking align with greater trends and not just our own organizational lens. So how many hours a day do you work? My boss would, would say I work eight hours a day, but some days uh, they're different. Uh, some days it's longer, some days it's shorter. Um, you know, we try to keep it to a full-time gig, but, um, you know, it, very policy aligned and within the context of, you know, emerging news and trends, it can, you know, it can go longer <laughs> for sure. Well, can you actually ever turn it off? Like based on the work that you're doing, can you ever actually turn it off? No, which is a blessing and a curse at the same time. Um, I work a lot from home, which allows me to kind of, you know, respond to something very quickly. But then I'm also never away from the office. And, you know, sometimes I'm just so tapped out that I say to my husband, no, I don't want to hear anymore. Because he'll say, oh, this political thing is so exciting. Uh, 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 no more, no more. But it's rare because, yeah, it, it's hard to turn off. But it's, it's the career path that I think best fits me um, and you know dabbling in multiple different areas is always exciting. Okay let's take a look at how you got here. Where'd you go to high school and when you graduated did you say oh yeah I know I want to work for a think tank as their director of research? So it's funny because I've always been somewhat an opportunity maximizer. I haven't been a long-term planner. Uh, so after high school I went to University of Calgary where that's where I've done all my degrees. So I did uh, a Bachelor of Science and an International Development undergrad degree, um, two of them at the same time. And then I graduated and I started working in the nonprofit sector, uh, doing settlement service support for immigrant and refugee youth. Hmm. That's where I found that I would say, hey, government, who was our, our primary funder, this is what these youth need. And I'm telling you from very clear experience. And they'd say, mm, that's great, but here's actually what they need. 
And there was this disconnect that was very evident and very frustrating. And that's what drove me to go back to get my Master of Public Policy because I thought there's no way that this can be the way that broader government works. Fortunately, it seems to be the case in a lot of, of circumstances. Uh, and then from there, I kept working, but then I did another master's degree, uh, a master's of science using health policy data uh, and looked at some healthcare utilization for kids with concussions. So the policy ramifications of that. So um, it's been a twisty sort of road. Um, I was working with the School of Public Policy for a good number of years and was consulting with MEI for a, a period before swapping it and starting full-time with MEI. And it's been just an upward, tra pro upward trajectory since with them. So did you seek out these opportunity changes or did they seek you out? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to sound aimless or, or that I've had no direction, but opportunities have been presented to me sort of throughout my life that I then jumped on and made the best of. Um, Working with the School of Public Policy was a direct choice. I worked very hard to be able to do that work with getting a research uh, assistant sort of position during my master's. And then that opened up the doors to, to other things. And so the MEI had actually contacted me through, you know, just connections. Um, and they were looking for a, a piece to be done, some research by a student. And that's how I became connected. And so it just grew from there. So. Um, I became focused on what I wanted once the opportunities were sort of presented, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, you must have done quality work because opportunities don't present themselves to people who aren't doing quality work. How important is having a strong work ethic that's focused on, you know, uh, high performance or high quality outcomes? How important is that in your career and do you believe in other people's careers? I think that's key. I think it's been key for me. Um, I don't say, oh, I'm done for the day. That's it. If something is needing to be done, if, if I believe something could be done better, I'm sort of a workaholic on some level. Um, you know, I do believe in rest and all of that as well, but I really am driven by duty. I have a duty to my organization to you know, do the best research I can do. I have a duty to myself to do the best work that I can do. So yeah, I've always had a very strong work ethic, which I think uh, has translated to these opportunities and, and helped me along through the way. What do you think is the uh, personal characteristic that has been the most important that you possess that has helped you continue to move forward in your career? That's a great question. I think it's kind of twofold. I think being humble about my own work, um, I, I know when something can be better. So when it's brought to my attention, I go, yes, I know that could have been better. Um, or, you know, I, I take criticism well, I, especially if it's, you know, constructive criticism. Um, and that's the second part of it is, is seeking and accepting the feedback, even when it's not pleasant. If somebody says, you know, this isn't very good, you, you can be upset with that. Or you could say, how could I do that better? And that has really driven me forward, both academically and then professionally um, as I've moved on throughout my life. Well, it's been a great career, huh? Yeah, it has. It's, it's very exciting. I'm very excited to see, you know, where it goes uh, in the future. Yes, you still have an upward trajectory ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in and giving us a glimpse into your working life and your career path. Thank you for having me. <laughs>